Hailing from the great cold state of Alaska, I am the Frozen Gamer, and today I want to give you guys my review of Ghost Runner on Nintendo Switch. Now, I had previously covered uh, just some basic things about what the game was like, having gotten about halfway through at the time that I recorded the video. But now I want to give you guys my full impressions of the game, um, everything I have to say, how much I liked it, didn't like it, any problems that I came across, that sort of thing. Now, I had previously mentioned uh, that Ghost Runner is essentially a first-person parkour game where you also have a, uh, ninja skills. Um, and it's kind of like a mixture of Mirror's Edge and Hotline Miami in that you have all of the platforming of Mirror's Edge minus some of the additional parkour that um, that Faith has in, the, in those two games. Um, but then you also, anytime you get hit, you're dead immediately. And you have, but the good thing is, is that you can reset to the pre to the last checkpoint, which is, you know, however far back it happens to be, with the press of a button, and it just goes there immediately. There's no load times, nothing like that. Um, but as far as the overall game goes, I have to say I think that it's a really solid game. So this game is challenging. Now maybe it's just because I am. Not that skilled, because the fact is I'm not very skilled. I'm not the most skilled gamer. I don't typically play hard games. But this game appealed to me because I'm such a huge fan of Mirror's Edge, especially Mirror's Edge Catalyst. And having that uh, first-person parkour kind of thing going on, plus, you know, being a ninja. I mean, come on. That's awesome. Um, but, but apart from what drew me to the game, I found that the game was a lot of fun. Um, it was it was one of those games where it's just kind of like you just want to try one more time. You know, you, you screw up. Just okay, I'll try one more time. I can get the run perfect because you got to get the run almost perfect in order to to actually complete it a lot of times. And that's not always the case. I mean, there are occasions where you can kind of get away with if you screw up, you can land somewhere and then get yourself corrected. But the reality is that at least for me most of the time that that really wasn't an option it's pretty much if you don't get it right you gotta you gotta restart the checkpoint and sometimes that was really frustrating sometimes that you know it would be one of those areas where there's just like a ton of enemies and you manage to knock out all of them and then you you screw up and die on the last one and it's just oh it's so frustrating when when that happens um but then it makes it so that when you actually complete a run, when you when you get it just perfect, or you know, you manage to stumble your way through it and and somehow get it despite your mistakes, it feels really good, and you end up really appreciating it and appreciating the level design. And I will say that there are times in the game where I definitely was less happy with the level design, but. Most of the time, I don't feel like it was a problem with necessarily that like it was unfair. I feel like in more cases than not, really the issue was just, is it actually, can I do it? And there were, there were definitely times where it just felt like, oh man, this is impossible. I don't know how I'm ever going to get through this. And then I did it. And sometimes it just required looking up strategies online, getting some ideas for tips, even sometimes looking at walkthroughs and just kind of seeing what it was that someone did. Because the thing is, you, when you do, when you look at a video walkthrough, basically you can only watch what they actually did. It's difficult for them to explain as they're doing it because most of the reaction times have to be really fast. And so you kind of just have to watch and see, okay, you know, they. You know, they, they use the, uh, I can't even remember the name of the ability. I literally finished the game in an hour ago, and I can't remember the name of the ability. But there's this thing where basically when you're in the air, you can slow down time for a second and kind of, like, move to the side and, or, or you know, like, slowly aim your cursor in order to, to get to a point where you need to jump. So, like, you can jump off a wall, kind of turn your, your view so that you're aiming back at that wall, and then jump back onto it, like when you need to get over an obstacle that's that comes up, like whether it's electricity coming along the side of the wall or flames going up, as in a certain um, 
boss fight, which I'm not- I probably won't have any footage of that because I didn't record it beforehand and I don't really feel like going back to it because it was so frustrating. But, um... Yeah, there's just, there's so many different options of things you can do, and you get a variety of different abilities that you can use, um, and those abilities are are usable pretty much anytime you're not in a boss fight. So it's um I don't know. There's just really a lot I could say about the game. I I think that uh, I, mean, I enjoyed the music. I thought that was really good. Uh, you know, very techno kind of vibe. Um, I guess might be considered dubstep, I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. I just think of techno because I'm a 90s kid and that's what we called it in the 90s. I don't know if that's what it's still called. Um, but I also, um, I just really, I like I like the way that, that everything kind of comes together. Now, I do think that sometimes there, there are a few frustrations I have. My biggest frustration is that if you, uh, I mean, even though there are a fair amount of checkpoints throughout each level, even with those checkpoints, it doesn't, like, save save the game, it just saves your checkpoint. So, like, if you, if you, if the game crashes on you, like it happened to me a few times, one, one time of which was after, like, a really frustrating section that I finally cleared and then it crashed on me, um, then you have to restart the entire level. You have to go through everything you went through before that, and you don't just get back to that checkpoint, you have to go back to the very beginning. And I think that that is definitely a criticism of it. I think that that should be changed. I think that they need to just say it so that each checkpoint is considered a hard save. So that if if something hap if the game crashes, if you, you know, lose power or whatever it happens to be, you can just get back to where you were and you don't have to keep doing the level over and over. Now, I will say that I didn't have a lot of crashes. I think I had a few, and only one of those was, like, really frustrating because of where I was at in the level. Apart from that, I think it happened maybe a couple of times. Um, but, it, for the most part, it, it was not a common thing, and usually when it did happen, I wasn't far enough along to where it, it was too much of a problem. Um, and, you know, games crash. That's just an, an unfortunate reality of the way things are now. You know, they'll crash, they'll freeze, whatever. So, if you don't, I mean, when you don't have to deal with it, great. But when you do, it is what it is. So, getting back to a bit more of, of how the game works. Now, um, there is a good ramping up of difficulty. I do feel like that there are some sections earlier on that are more difficult than later sections, but then there are some later sections that are so infuriatingly difficult that I had to do them literally probably hundreds of times. Um, th there's one one particular area, which I won't show footage from it, but there's, there's an area right at the very end of the game. It's what's considered the last boss fight, and um, there... I'm not going to say anything about what exactly happens it, but but I'll just say that basically it involves a lot of platforming, and that particular platforming section was so infuriating that I, I, I have no idea how many times I died before I ended up just restarting the level, because I kind of wanted to just get a fresh slate clean, and then I just... Went through all of that, went through all the stuff before it again, which wasn't very much, and then got to that section that was really frustrating. And eventually I got through it, and then I got to another frustrating section that was easier, but still really hard. And then I got to a couple, you know, the remaining sections, which varied in difficulty. Um, but it, it's kind of interesting seeing how the difficulty ramps up in certain ways, which, I mean, you know, you'd expect that. As you get further in a game, it should get more difficult. Um, but there's also some useful abilities that, that make some fights less difficult than they would be otherwise. Something that I do feel that I really need to point out that I, I hadn't mentioned yet is that the boss fights are actually really good in this game. Now, the first one... Very difficult. <laughs> 
Um, although if you if you kind of know like the the tricks at least for the very first part, it can go a lot faster than it took me. Um, but the and then the the rest of the fight, or, or like the second part was also was extremely frustrating, and then the third part, third and fourth parts were were less frustrating. But anyway, so um, the boss fight. There's one boss fight in particular which you'll see some footage of here. Minor spoilers, but really, it, it doesn't it doesn't really spoil much of anything. Um, this fight was really good. Like I, I was really impressed with it because even though I failed a lot of times, I mean this what you'll see here is my successful run. But um, even though I failed a lot of times, I always felt like it was my fault that I failed. And when I actually succeeded, you know, it was really satisfying. Uh, same same goes with the other boss fights. Um, even though the previous one was just infuriating the entire way through. This particular one has no checkpoints as you whittle down the boss's health. So uh, you have to get you have to get through the thing the entire uh, thing without getting hit. <laughs> you, you, otherwise you have to restart the entire fight over again. but it's it's worth it. And I, I just thought in general the boss fights were really good and that was something that I, I appreciated. And um, going along with that, I just think the encounters in general were pretty were pretty great. I mean, there's there's like I said, sometimes where they get really frustrating because of how how difficult they can be. But then there are other times where it's just the the way everything's laid out, and then you manage to get that perfect run. It's just super satisfying. But anyway, as I was basically trying to say is. I feel like this game is just really solid. I, I feel like it's it's a game that's definitely worth playing, and I firmly believe that anyone who enjoys Mirror's Edge or Hotline Miami or any game where you play as a ninja should check this out. Um, be aware that yes, it can be really frustrating, but I I don't think it took me more than maybe five to ten hours total playtime. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure because the Switch doesn't show um, the playtime until you actually get to a certain point. Because I played a lot in spurts. Um, but I, I feel like it wasn't ridiculous in the challenge. Now I do want to get into some positives and negatives of the actual Nintendo Switch version because it could definitely be a damper depending on how much you care about visuals in particular. Um, now, I've said before, and I mean, you'll see some gameplay footage here. It's not a bad looking game on, on the Switch. It actually is, is pretty good considering the fact that it's on a portable system. Um, handheld mode, the visuals are pretty terrible. Uh, they're maybe not quite as bad as I originally said. Um, I think that they are probably pretty much on par with Doom 2016. But without looking at them side by side, it's hard to say for sure. I will try to see if I can get some footage um, in this video that actually shows actual handheld gameplay. See see how, how much different it looks compared to the regular gameplay. Um, just because I realize you can actually record it um, directly on the system. So that's probably what I'll do. But um, handheld mode definitely is lower resolution. You can tell that they they really paired it back, but that being said, it does perform pretty well. Um, probably about ninety, at least ninety-five, probably more like ninety-seven percent of the time, it it performs well. It, you know, it runs at a, what seems to be a pretty rock solid thirty FPS. Um, if there's drops, it's not so noticeable that it detracts from the game. However, and this is a big however I want to point out, because it, it, ver it only happened to me a couple of times, but there are a couple of areas where the frame rate drops so, so low that it is just about unplayable. And um, I barely made it through the section that I'll be showing you here. I mean, it's it's really really bad how how terrible it runs in that particular section. And there's only I think one other spot a little bit after this where it runs that badly, 
but this was by far the worst section. This is this is the one section where like I couldn't believe how t terribly it ran. Like there had been plenty of situations with just as many enemies and or at least it seemed like there were just as many enemies, but I never really had issues with it running differently. And this this particular area was just I mean, as you'll see in this footage, this is docked footage. This, I mean, it's it's the same whether you're playing docked or handheld, as far as the the frame rate in this particular section. And hope I really hope they'll fix that. Um, but yeah, it's bad. Now I will say that I have not yet tried recording. I mean, I tried checking it since they put out an update. I don't know even even know what was in the update exactly. Um, the only thing I've noticed so far with the update is that the cutscene when you start up the game it isn't choppy anymore which is great but you know that's still I don't I don't know if they fixed that other section that was super choppy if they did I will um, I'll, I'll include some gameplay that shows that they fixed it and hope I really hope they did because it was it was super bad it was it was so terrible that I just I just about quit right there. I was really tempted just because I was thinking, okay, maybe I'll just wait and see if they patch this, but I've seen other games where they haven't patched things and they're just like, okay, I, I will I will deal with it. I will get through it. And when I get through it, see if it continues to have problems. And it didn't really. I and mean, there's like, I think one other spot where it had frame rate issues like this, but um, it was much less of an issue in that one. And um, I think it was a much shorter section is what it was. But otherwise, otherwise the frame rate was pretty solid. I mean, 30 FPS is not great, and yeah, of course, I definitely would rather have 60 minimum for a game. But when you have a portable game, I mean, I mean you, when you have it on the Switch, which is a portable system, I'm willing to give some, some leeway. I mean, because it's this particular game is intended to be more of a realistic style and you know unlike a game like Splatoon 2 or um, Super Mario uh, Odyssey you know where of course they run at a great 60 frames per second and and all that uh, this game has a little more going on with it and so it's understandable why they had to keep it at a lower frame rate to make it I mean, I mean, we're anyway. Point I'm trying to make is that it only runs at 30 most of the time. There's a couple spots where it runs really, really badly. Probably 15 or lower. I think it's probably lower because I feel like the 15 frames per second that you get on Ocarina of Time is easier to deal with than what was here. Um, but I hope they fix that. We'll we'll have to wait and see. Um, apart from that, though, uh, I mean, the Switch version plays well. I, I think that, I mean, it took me a little bit to get used to it. I still think that the sensitivity of the Joy-Con uh, right joystick is a little too much for me, just because of how short the travel distance is. It definitely plays better with the Pro Controller, um, but it's completely playable with with the, with the Joy-Cons. It's just a matter of kind of getting used to it. I had to lower the sensitivity down to 35 to make it you to make it usable because most of the time you're not really going for like precision damage or anything so it's just kind of figuring out how to work with it and initially it was it was tough i do think that if they could put in gyro it would help a lot but it's not necessary the the game doesn't absolutely need it because there's very few sections where you even have um, any sort of long range attack and there's no time when you need to have precision because you're not I mean as long as you can get a hit on an enemy they're dead well other than certain enemy types that require different strategies but yeah that being said runs pretty well all that um, plays pretty well on the switch I definitely know that it's a big big downgrade from the other versions in terms of visuals um i a couple times when i needed help with figuring out how to get through like a boss fight or um you know like a certain platforming section that sort of thing those situations i um 
I, you know, I looked at other videos, and I think that probably pretty much all I was seeing was the PC version, um, which, of course, you know, that's going to be a dramatic difference anyway, but yeah, it looks a lot better on, on other platforms, and um, so if you care a ton about how the game looks, you're better off getting PC or one of the other versions. And if you care more about just playing the game, having the ability to play it anywhere you go, then the Switch version is a good version to have. Um, but all that being said, I'm not going to put a review score on this. I, I'm kind of more along the lines of thinking that review scores don't really help as much as actually listening to what people say. So what I'm, what I'm going to say is that I really enjoyed this game. Um, I think it's a great game. It's not a perfect game, but it is a great game, and I think it is well worth playing, and I do think that you should give it a try. So, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about Ghost Runner on Nintendo Switch. If you have any thoughts about this version, or if you've had a chance to play one of the other versions, you know, leave a comment below. Until next time, this has been The Frozen Gamer, and I will talk to you later. Take care.